So there's been a few changes recently to the way Cabbage uh, interacts with its widgets, right? So I'm just going to quickly show um, just an overview of, of, of those new changes that have come in and how we can replace the existing ones and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I'm going to call this Cabbage Ops. Okay, so we've got this. Okay, first of all, everything's gone to camel case now. So, um, so all of those identifiers are now camel case, but that's that's fine. So the first thing we do if we want to implement this new GUI mode is put in GUI mode and we set it to Q because <laughs> that's not really how you spell GUI. Okay, GUI mode Q, right? Um, so what this means is that every time we're sending information over and back between the widgets and C sound, it now goes into a queue and it's kind of first in, first out kind of queue. Okay. Uh, the way it was before was that every single widget was polled. So if you had a hundred widgets on in your plugin, uh, on every K cycle, each one of those hundred widgets would be polled and checked for a value. Okay. So this is this is much more efficient now because now it's only going to once you move a widget, then it's marked as okay it's in the queue so only widgets that have been moved or changed are in the queue so um let's say so we i'm just going to save this and i'm going to put in a, a button here okay and i'm going to give the button a channel name now in the past we would have used identifier channels we don't need to do that anymore i'm going to say button one and what i'm also going to do is i'm going to put in a label so we can see how one button can affect a label call that hello and i'm going to give that a channel name as well and again in the past if we wanted to dynamically up update the label that says hello we would have used an identifier channel okay but we don't need to do that anymore so i'm going to just call that label one these are horrible names but menu now so we have two ways of accessing the value of this button right traditionally what we would have done let me pull this down a little bit here traditionally what we would have done is say say k button chan get chn get and then button one okay and then if i did a print k2 there on k button every time we push the button we would see a change value down here okay so you can still do that there's nothing wrong with that but you can also use the cabbage get opcode now and what's kind of handy so that's just a straight replacement for chan get but we can also you, we can also access a kind of a trigger from this, okay? So we can say every time um, button one is pressed or every time button changes, we can trigger something. So it's just gonna send a, a single one followed by loads of zeros. And where that is kind of useful is if, for example, we wanted to change the value of hello, we could do something like, let me do it the old way first. Um, we would have done something like if we go back to, let me just say, okay, button one chan get button one in the old way of doing things we probably would have done something like this if or we could have done k trig changed and then k button one and then we would do if k trig is equal to one then and then end if here and then we would you know update something here right um we can still do that. We can do something like, um, so we do cabbage set, okay? Because we don't have the, the identifier channels anymore. So we do cabbage set. If I can remember the parameters for cabbage set. First, we we pass the channel, right? Which is label one, okay? Then we can just pass some text if we want. We can do text. I'm just gonna get this, oh, okay. Cabbage set, okay. There's a trigger value here. So I'm gonna say one. Okay, and then text. No, not hello, it already says hello. I'm gonna say goodbye. And close that out. And now if I press this, that says goodbye, but it's too too big, right, to fit in. Okay, that was the old way of doing it. We could check, we could have this K trig changed button. If K trig is one, that means that something's after changing, then change the the value of the label what we can do now it's kind of simpler we can just put in the k trig value here val value the k trig value here so we can save and then we can just push this and it says goodbye so we don't have to use the trigger value with um with chance set and um, we can take it out if it's irate uh, and it'll just kind of do it 
um, but the kind of trigger value is is nice so let's say for example if we have we have the slider down here let's say we want to dynamically change the color of the slider using oh I don't know um, well okay every time we push this button we're going to dynamically update the color of the slider okay so this slider has a channel called gain right we know K trig so I'm going to take out this label I don't don't want this label anymore so the channel is going to be gain okay and then in here we're going to say color okay and then we're going to pass it say um, just a random value between random k between say 100 and 255 okay now color takes three arguments at the very least so let's try that okay now if i push this so now we dynamically change that color so it i mean it's it's cleaner than the identifier channel stuff right because we don't have to keep checking if something's updated or and same with the cabbage get the fact that it outputs a a trigger value that's kind of neat as well obviously in many cases you won't need the trigger value at all and you can just call it like this or just use chan get but the rule here is anywhere where you might have used chan set in the past now use cabbage set if you are doing um gui mode q um yeah, so I mean, that's the same thing we could we can hide that. Let's say, for example, we want to hide the um, if we want to say visible. And what we can do here is we can say if we want to make it visible every time we toggle the button. Right. So we can set this button to be equal to value one from the start. So it's visible from the start. And then in this case, we can just pass the value of the button, right, which is either going to be a zero or a one. So K trig is going to be one every time it changes right but the value button is always going to be one or zero so that should give us some kind of mechanism for toggling and we've got cabbage set visible i need to pass the obviously i need to pass the channel for the widget okay and now we should have so we can toggle that on and off you know obviously we can do yeah whatever we can we can do bounds and we can change the bounds of that slider by just doing again random say 0 100 make sure we're going to cast this as a k value um so well actually i'm just going to set i'm going to keep the x the the width and the height to be the same so whatever 100 100 so if i save this again so that should move that guy around yeah so you can take control of these of these widgets so that means you can automate stuff as well so let's say if i wanted to have um that widget moving around okay i can leave okay let's take out button and we'll just do this randomly okay so um i'm not going to use random k i'm going to use let's say kx and i'm going to do something like a uh, rand i which is going to interpolate between the random values i'm going to set it to 200 so 400 for the x value i'm going to have an update rate of one and then i'm going to do ky and then i'm going to do rand i and then it's 300 high so and i'll set that to be one as well and now i'm going to pass abs kx i'm doing abs because obviously i don't want the, the negative parts of this signal and i'm going to do ky now k trig is gone now right so here's the thing we want this to be automated right but we could we can run it like this right we can say something like this um whoops error Ding, ding, I'm missing a bracket or uh, a comma. Okay. So, well, yeah, we could do something like this. Okay. Let me. So, um, we could do something like that, but that's a little bit, that's a little bit inefficient, right? Because if KSMPS is 32, that means that every 32 audio samples this is updating, that's a high frame rate, right? That's like, you know, high definition. Probably don't need it. So, we can slow things down by just putting a metro directly in here have a metro 10 that means 10 times a second it's going to update okay that's that's a bit too low right because now we can start to see the, the jerkiness of it you know that's i mean the, the point is here that we can even at 30 okay that's still a lot slower than setting it to go every k boundary right so i hope um that kind of clears up a few things about using the um the new GUI mode and if you have any questions please um, just ask on the site ask on the, the cabbage forum and we're always happy to help out